What's up, Obscure Tech people? It's Mark coming at you with a little bit of a dual purpose video. Firstly, I don't want to talk about the Sony CX430, kind of a piece of uh, obscure tech camcorder wise. Everybody talks about the CX405, which is older technology. It's all older technology. But uh, I don't want to see what looks the best camcorder, cell phone or webcam. Now I'm going to use some decent quality stuff. I'm not going to use just a generic webcam right now. We're talking and recording with the Razer IO Pro, which in my experience with webcams is the best I've found so far that is either a hundred dollars or less. And I think it actually gives pretty good video quality and it's nice to look at. It's a nice looking webcam customizable with the Razer software. You can do a lot with it or very little narrow. So we're going to switch from that here in a minute because this is the example of what you're going to get in a well-lit room with the Razer Kyo Pro. We'll do the camera next and then we'll do the CX430. But I do want to talk about the features of the CX430, which uh, the first one is a big one, especially for vlogging purposes. And that is the image stabilization. If you can see here, the no matter where I go on the camera, the sensor floats around. So it is extremely good for vlogging purposes. Very stable. You've got a flip out and rotatable screen that is touch screen. You've got a cinema mode, which is kind of dark. We'll put that to use as well. Uh, but it, it's it's really nice. It's just got that dark cinematic feel and look to it. It's got 32 gigs of inbuilt storage, so you don't even have to use an SD card with this thing at all. You've got a mic jack, a full-size SD, and a headphone jack, so you could actually monitor as well, but I don't monitor when I shoot with this thing. You've got a uh, cold shoe mount on top, and it is the Sony proprietary. It does also have a uh, an AC jack, so you can actually run constant power to the camera and not even use battery power. So if you're going to put this on a mount or tripod, then you're going to be good. You can just plug in the AC adapter and never worry about the battery going bad. Battery, got a third party one in here. Lasts quite a long time, hours, I would say. Oh, it does also have that micro HDMI there too. So if you want to run this out to a capture card, very easy to do so. It shoots in 1080p, 60 frames per second in AVC HD, or you can do a MP4 mode, which is lower quality, but it's pretty good as well. Uh, everything's pretty customizable. You can mess with the white balance. You can mess with the low light settings. So, I mean, it's it's a very easy point and shoot machine. Whenever I use it, I'm going to leave it on uh, Intelligent Auto because honestly, video cameras just seem to work the best on Intelligent Auto. You don't really need to get in and mess with the settings and stuff like that. You can, for the most part, set it to Intelligent Auto and just film and record. That all being said, Let's switch over to the phone. It's going to be a Samsung S20 FE. We'll also have good audio on that. This, that's the good thing about all three of these devices. I can use a mic and interface with this. I can use a mic and interface with the phone. I can even use a mic and interface with the camera because of the mic jack. So we'll actually do that. We'll also do some vlog shots as well. But that optical image stabilization is absolutely fantastic in there. This is a great vlog camera for outside. Of course, low light, not going to be the best thing ever in low light. You have to have good lighting if you're going to use this inside. So you're going to need some LED lights and such, but outside it's fantastic for the money. Speaking of which, I got this for basically free in a radio station sale. It was laying around with a whole bunch of stuff that I grabbed and I got like I don't know, thousands of dollars worth of stuff for 170 bucks. I just considered this free and I've used the like out of it. I digress. Let's go to the phone. Okay, now we've got the phone set up, the Samsung S20 FE 
front camera mode so I can view what I'm doing. I could turn it around and get better quality, but we're just going to go with full HD 60 frames per second because that's what the Sony camcorder does. Uh, the Kyo Pro also does full HD at 60 frames per second and the Samsung S20 FE, same thing. Good to go. So this is the quality from that. And I'm actually quite impressed with lighting on. The phone does a great job and you can wire a basic interface, which this is the Shure MVI. You can throw this straight into the camera and, uh, and get great audio. It's just running directly in and using the stock Android app. And this is the video quality that we're getting, which is pretty dang good. It really makes you think like, what do I want to use to do my videos? Really? Do I want to use a webcam like the Kyo Pro? Do I want to use what I've got in my pocket, which is a, a decent phone? Or do I want to go camcorder? The decision is kind of tough. Of course, you could go out and buy a mirrorless or DSLR camera and spend a lot of money, but look at this picture from the front facing camera is pretty impressive. And actually, the Kyo Pro did a pretty good job as well. And this will probably do a pretty good job. Also, audio, this is really the simplest to run an interface directly into this phone, USB-C wise. It doesn't get much easier than that. At least uh, with the computer, you know, I have to at least set up my sound sources, my sound and video source with the phone. It's just automatic. So this is a really good solution. If you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, you just pretty much need to have good lighting with all three of these options. That being said, you've seen this, you've seen the webcam. Now let's go to the camcorder. Okay, now we've got the Sony CX430 hooked up, ready to go. This is the image quality you're going to get from that. And we'll do some vlogging afterwards. That way we can get the image stabilization uh, example for you. But we'll walk around and I'll talk about what I liked and didn't like about the webcam, the phone, and the camcorder. Now... This is my second run with the camcorder because it had a beeping sound, like a constant beep. I think that was because of the interface I used having phantom power on, which I used with a mic lifter cable to get the volume of this up. So you may hear a little more like hissiness in this audio because I'm not using a inline preamp to get more gain out of this microphone now. But we're really here for the image quality. But I do want to show that audio ran from an interface to a mic jack on a camcorder or camera works pretty well also. So hopefully this take turns out. If it did, you'll know because you'll be watching it. If it didn't, then I'll probably have to audio sync, three claps, record, all that good stuff. But this is the quality from the camcorder. Now I am secretly rooting for the camcorder because I do really like just leaving this thing on my tripod with the AC adapter running into it. I don't like pulling out a phone, worrying about the battery and, and all that. It would be nice if I could just have a stationary setup, this camcorder with a line in coming from my interface, something I don't ever have to move. Now, granted, I could technically do that with the webcam and the phone, but there's something about the camcorder just being stationary with the line ran in my phone. That wasn't my, this isn't my everyday carry. It's actually got a broken screen. So I use it for video recording, but I carry it with me. That way I can pull it out. And that's what she said. Yeah, I had to. That way I can pull it out and take a quick video anywhere I go while not worrying about compromising my phone because my notifications are just constant. So I kind of like having the two phone system. So I'd love to leave this just on a tripod, good to go, but we'll see what the video quality does. In this lighting setting, I imagine, judging from the first take, they're all gonna be fairly close. Thoughts to come. Let's go outside. Okay, so after a quick haircut and some test footage, I'm gonna go ahead and give my thoughts on all three options. Uh, while also walking around, kind of getting the image stabilization going here. Uh, it's a very cloudy day, not going to go cinema mode here, but 
the Kyo Pro definitely is adequate. Uh, I thought that it was a bit grainy, but not, not terribly. It was still clear. It was fairly sharp. Um, I'll walk around here. But it, uh, it, it did a really good job, and I think for that matter, it is very sufficient. The Samsung phone, which I did just use the front camera, uh, so I will link, like at the end of this video, you'll see the subscribe bubble with my logo, and you'll also see a video to the left. That's going to be a link to a video using the rear camera on my main channel, Obscure Mics. So there's that. Uh, but I thought the the front facing camera of the phone did adequate. It was very good. It was sharp. I didn't like the colors. I thought it looked kind of washed. So for that matter, I think it and the Kayo are, are pretty similar. The Kayo had slightly better colors, but it also had kind of oversaturation a little bit. Surprisingly, uh, I did end up liking what I'm using now the most, the Sony CX430. My only issue, and there's only one issue with me, and it was just not very sharp. It's a very soft image indoors, and I know that. That being said, I still enjoyed it the most. So the Sony CX430 is definitely the camera for me as far as like cheap YouTube talking head productions go. And uh, I'm going to run. This is how good this camera is right here. The image stabilization and all that good stuff. I am running. So the fact that I can walk around and vlog with this thing, have the screen facing me, which is why I use the Samsung phone front camera, because I like to see what's going on. This is just my favorite. Not perfect by any means. Definitely a soft picture. But it was a fun experiment for me to figure out what I want to use in a lot of my videos, and it's the CX430. Now, CX405, you're going to get the same image quality. No headphone jack, though. Battery smaller, and a few other caveats. But for the most part, they're the same camera. I do prefer the CX430. If you can find anything above the 405 with a camera jack, the quality is going to be the same or better. That's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, happy video making.